For the 2015 Nobel Prize Award that was given out in medicine, uh, a couple people got a lot of money for their particular discoveries in treatments for particular types of diseases that have affected humans. So one was for this particular type of roundworm from given to Satoshi Omura and William Campbell. And the other was to a woman, the first woman to receive the prize in physiology and medicine, Yu Yu Tu, for discovering a particular drug that was found from a particular type of plant called Artemisia annua. This drug that was developed is called artemisinin and it was used to treat malaria, estimated to have saved uh, hundreds of thousands of lives. And the story is very interesting. We're not going to discuss the entire thing here. But the reason why this is relevant in our discussion is because we're talking about looking for treatments for malaria. So a lot of people talked about this particular drug and actually, although it has saved hundreds of thousands of lives, um, now it's kind of not so good in particular areas where a lot of these malarial parasites have developed resistance to artemisinin. So as a result, uh, there's a lot of research now that is trying to go on in trying to figure out other types of drugs. So how do people figure out how to find drugs that can actually kill malaria when one drug stops working? So in the big picture scheme of things here, we're not trying to figure out and get you to try and uh, discover new drugs for this. Maybe that's something that you could do in the future. But the big picture idea here is to understand how science works and how new drugs can be discovered. So with the way that Yo Yo Tu discovered, she actually went through uh, old, old Chinese ancient traditional uh, history books to try to find the information from there and then went and outlined a few of the specific possible uh, plants and the products that could be used and tested them and found one that was very successful. Now with a lot of the information that's available to us using bioinformatics databases we can actually go about trying to find potential new treatments for malaria in a different way. So if we understand how the plasmodium um, parasite, the thing that actually causes malaria, this protist plasmodium, how it actually works and how its metabolism functions, you can search through its met metabolic pathways and then try to find particular areas that could actually be inhibited uh, by inhibiting some of their enzymes. So that's how a lot of drugs work. Uh, metabolic pathways that are necessary for the organism to survive and you figure out some kind of way to disrupt it. As you know from metabolism, it's basically a collection of all the chemical reactions that take place in the body. Most of these reactions need some kind of enzyme to help them do that. And then if you study higher level biology, you'll understand that enzymes can be inhibited by certain chemicals. So if you can figure out a way to take this enzyme that plays an important role in a particular area of cell control, and it's supposed to bind to a normal substrate here, if you can figure out some way to add some kind of drug or chemical chemical in so that when it binds to this thing it causes the shape to change that can actually prevent the substrate from working and potentially disrupt the whole cell and cause the plasmodium to actually die. So that's the idea there. So if we know about plasmodium metabolism, we know which enzymes are involved, then we can try to search for enzymes that could potentially uh, be inhibited and the types of drugs and different chemicals that might do that. So you could search by using things that have a similar three-dimensional shape and you can predict three-dimensional shapes sometimes based on the actual amino acid sequences. So big picture, we're using all this information that's available to us, bioinformatics databases of all these metabolic pathways or list of chemicals or list of enzymes and then we try to find potential ones. You test them in the lab with actual plasmodium protists and then you try to find inhibitors that will prevent this thing from actually being able to reproduce or live uh, or live or try to kill it before it develops enough to be able to reproduce. So that's the idea here and why do we need to focus on finding new anti-malarial drugs because of drug resistance. Resistance is getting developed in lots of different types of medications especially especially with antibiotics, the use of antibiotics to treat bacterial diseases. Malaria is not caused by a bacterial disease, but 
this drug resistance can still arise from natural selection and the concepts of evolution. So hope that made sense. Um, maybe you can be part of the next group of scientists who will help us find the next cure for the most annoying diseases out there.